Hi, I'm Scott Grover. I want to tell you about a unique opportunity in Carmel Valley. First, let me give you a little backstory, a little of what we achieved and what we learned from our existing project. It all started with the goal that I would build a house for my wife and I, that she and I together can make into a home. You see, I've been building, rebuilding, or adding to other people's homes for decades now, and it was time to benefit in a new way from those skills. Look at this place, custom to the end, locally handmade doors and cabinets, there's radiant heating, exposed beam ceiling, and look at the stonework on the fireplace, actual Carmel stone. My crew handpicked this stone from an exploratory cut at a potential new quarry in the southwest corner of the county. The tile work in the shower turned out great. I had large crews working here. Ultimately, more than 80 workers contributed to this single building. This is not my house. This is a home I built nearly 20 years ago. There's no big crew in my house. You might say that I largely built it by myself. At this point, nearly half the hours invested into the project have been done by my two hands. Here, let me read a definition to you. Perseverance. This is from Oxford. Perseverance. Persistence in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. Now, if I may, let me illustrate that to you. My fiancé at the time, Michelle, and I found an undeveloped plot of land that came with a magical view, a substantial building area, and a yurt. With the assistance of her father, we took hold of the land, and I built a shed for our belongings. And with our two cats, we moved into the yurt. I drew out a rough floor plan and made a model of our planned home, and contracted with a local architect whom I've worked with. Less than six months later, with enormous fanfare, Michelle became my wife. I had to extend our storage shed to accommodate the generosity from our wedding guests. Not long after, my mother, whose health had faded, passed. I extended our shed to hold her estate. After several months of waiting for our architect to produce the plans, we decided to let him go. Without schooling or training, I drew the plans myself. Not on CAD, but literally drew, pencil on paper. The text I wrote in longhand. By the time we had a building permit, we had already welcomed home our firstborn. Against traditional advice, we accepted further assistance from Michelle's father by way of building capital, and construction began. Not long after that, my brother, whom I was extremely close with, passed. Again, I extended our storage shed and added what were his belongings. Months became a year, and Samantha, our firstborn, became an older sister to Matilda. While we waited to be discharged from the hospital, word of a global pandemic spread through the building and beyond. Within a month or so, the Monterey County Building Department had stopped inspecting non-essential jobs. For the most, our project was halted. Michelle's father became nervous, straining our relationship. Ultimately, it was best to find another funding source. Days within signing papers on the new loan, a wildfire took more than half the homes in our community, including ours. Nothing but ash for as far as the eye could see. We had less than 20 minutes to load our children and cats into the vehicles and flee. No time to concern ourselves with any belongings. Besides, I kind of figured we were just getting out of the way of the firefighters. That wasn't the case. Within a month of the disaster, we returned to our property. With nothing but the clothes on our backs that we escaped in, we cleared away the debris and made a home from a concrete room that was attached to the block basement walls that had survived the disaster. All we could do was hold tough. Not being adequately insured, the new construction loan we had curated no longer qualified. This was due to the additional cost to rebuild what we had lost. After months of looking for a viable alternative to move forward, it occurred to me that the value of an ADU, that's the new term for a caretaker's cottage, would bring us back into a favorable equation to secure construction funds, not just for one home, but now for two houses. So I drew another set of plans, got a second building permit, and we secured additional funding and began to build again. Just a year and a half later brings us to today. If that doesn't say determined or illustrate the will to stay on course, I'll add this. I'm sure you're aware the last few years have been impacted with more than its fair shares of cost changes. From the pandemic and its impact on labor and supplies, the wildfires up and down the West Coast with its impact on the lumber industry, and the tangential effects the war in Ukraine has had on fuel. 
And then, of course, every project has its own unique, unanticipated increases. Collectively, the impact of this has made our original budget notably off from the new reality. There's no benefit in knowing that this has been the case across the entire industry. How have we endured? That has been largely addressed by cutting our labor and payroll budget. In short, I've taken on more of the work myself. With the exception of one month, I have rigorously labored through all weather conditions, week after week, trade by trade. By doing so, this project is projected to land at just $265 per square foot. For comparison, a neighbor of ours is paying in excess of $1,000 per square foot to have their home rebuilt. Oh, and you're likely wondering about that one month where I didn't work? Well, there was an afternoon where I misstepped and while well, we were framing the second story and it resulted in four broken ribs. In any case, working with diligence and living frugally, the economic shifts haven't caused any insurmountable obstacles. We do need to acknowledge though that the smaller the crew, the longer things tend to take. There is a saying in construction, there are always three desires on every project, that it's quality, that it's cheap, and that it's fast. The catch is, at best, only two of the three can be achieved at any time. That brings us to now. At this point, I only hope that there is no doubt in our resolve, tenacity, or our ability to persevere with integrity and adaptation. Now, moving forward. What I intend to do is acquire additional parcels left vacant in the wake of the fire and embellish the property with a home that hits the sweet spot for this region. After talks with our appraiser, as well as a couple of strategic realtors whom I've worked with, I know I can design and build what has local sellable value. For us here on this project, we believe it's best to complete the guest house and to fortify the main residence by making the outer shell time resistant, then shift our primary focus onto more financially gratifying endeavors. Admittingly, the main house still has a way to go, but the next inspection of the ADU will be its final inspection. And although I've been building homes for a long time now, this project has had its unique challenges and lessons. But the key takeaway is, I have shown that I can build two homes in two years. So, here's the plan in its most simple description. I intend to build less costly homes than mine for those with more wealth than I. I have established a fruitful history with the county and positive relationships with our local administrators and inspectors. The homes I built on our property are extreme custom homes. I have on site constructed even the doors and windows. There are dozens of lots where homes were lost in the fire that still have existing approved septic systems and the PG&E has replaced the transformers so it'll be quick and inexpensive to get them hooked up. In closing, I can provide scenarios that I have calculated to illustrate my general goal and structure, as well as notes that I have collected from local realtors and builders. This is a solid way to gradually continue to complete our property while we continue to work with a team and profit investors. If you made it to the end of this little video, I just want to say I truly appreciate your time. Thank you.